Hey everyone, how's it going? So when I first started this seemingly endless series of Generation 1 solo runs, if you remember, I actually showed off a Lapras run in the background. I didn't actually get all that far and I never intended to actually use Lapras in one of these runs, but hey, we've been doing a lot of single form Pokemon, so Lapras, it's your time to shine. A Pokemon a lot of people think will be very good at this challenge and it's easy to see why. Lapras has a huge move pool, meaning we'll have coverage for nearly every trainer we're about to face. Furthermore, Lapras has insanely good base stats. It's just outside of the top 10 of all Pokemon in Generation 1, pretty good at nearly everything minus speed, and best of all, it starts off with a water move, meaning Brock will be an absolute cakewalk. See what I did there? Pretty clever. But the one thing you may notice is my Lapras seems lower level than usual, and yes, I didn't battle any of the optional trainers, but there's something else that may hold Lapras back a little, and that is it's in the slow experience group. Now, you don't really need to understand how experience groups work, but Pokemon require different amounts of experience points to level up, and in Generation 1, the ones that require the most are the slow level up group, of which Lapras, Dragonite, Gyarados, who we've already done, they're all a part of that group, and this is always a problem with these types of Pokemon. It makes sense why they're part of it. It kind of counteracts the fact they're super strong Pokemon, so it takes you a little longer to level them up. But when we're trying to go fast, this isn't the greatest thing. And while none of the trainers on Route 3 and Mount Moon are much trouble, once we get to Cerulean, I realized I actually messed up. You see, Lapras at level 13 just gets destroyed by Pidgeotto. Despite the fact Lapras has a pretty good moveset, we don't have access to any of those moves now. In fact, the only moves we have are Water Gun and Growl. And Water Gun's not even a particularly good water attack. We're underleveled, Pidgeotto no sand attack. This just wasn't working. I tried several times. Heck, I even tried battling the Goldeen trainer at Misty's gym. I didn't attempt Misty because that wouldn't go well with just a water move. But I realized this was a situation where by trying to go fast, I ended up going slow. And so for the first time in a long time, I reset my game completely and started over. Because I knew there was a way I actually could beat Rival 2 a lot more consistently, and that was to get Lapras to level 16. Even if I used the two rare candies, I would be at level 15, and that would be a waste of rare candies, since it takes way more experience points to level up later. So what I'm going to do instead, in the interest of saving time, is to start over and battle trainers I think are going to be very quick, such as the junior trainer in Brock's gym. While his Pokemon are not one-hit KOs, by knocking them out, we actually will have a slightly easier time against Brock, so I think it does even out, and they give a ton of experience points, so I felt it was worth it. Now, at a much higher level, Brock is even easier than he was the last time, so we don't really need to spend too much time focusing on Brock number two. I'm also going to battle extra Pokemon in Mount Moon, any Geodude I find, as well as that Hiker, and at this point, all his Pokemon are easily outsped and won a KO'd, and if I do everything right, I should be at level 16 by the time I hit Rival 2. Unfortunately, I didn't encounter as many Geodudes as I normally do, so I was short about 400 or so experience points. Luckily, there is a way to gain them, it's just a little slow. We can battle that Goldeen Trainer, and although it may take you one or two attempts, it is definitely doable, and this will allow us to have Sing for Rival 2, and in case you thought it would make the fight a cakewalk, I have bad news for you, it will not. Sing has a measly 55 accuracy. So it basically is a coin flip whether it hits, and Pidgeotto outspeeds. So I need Pidgeotto to go for an attacking move, and then me to hit with Sing. You would be astonished how many attempts this took to do. Hilariously enough, in the attempt that ends up being successful, Pidgeotto doesn't even stay asleep for very long. That's something else that can go wrong, and that's amazing. But the most important thing is that Pidgeotto never used Sand Attack. As always, Abra can't attack us, so that's a nice reprieve. And Rattata isn't too much of a threat, although it can get a critical hit Hyper Fang. That would be bad. The biggest concern is Bulbasaur, and thankfully I do in fact put that to sleep. 
And with Bulbasaur asleep, we can just spam Water Gun, hope it doesn't wake up, and while it's not the prettiest strategy, it works, and we're able to finally get by Rival 2 and move on to the rest of the game. And to be quite honest, for the next little while, the game is going to get a heck of a lot easier. The trainers on Nugget Bridge and on the way to Bill's house don't pose much of a threat. Even the Oddish trainer didn't prove to be too challenging. As for the SSN, we are going to get Body Slam earlier than Lapras will learn it via level up, about three levels earlier, and this will make Rival 3 fairly easy, because rather than it being like a 4 or 5 hit KO to knock out Pidgeotto, it only takes two Body Slams to knock it out this time. Raticate was a 1 hit KO, but I think that crit mattered. As I mentioned off the top, our speed is not very good, so Kadabra outspeeds us, thankfully we're not confused. But the biggest thing is we can knock out Ivysaur, maybe it would be two hits, it's looking like it's going to be a range. And yeah, it's going to be three hits, but see how little Vine Whip is doing to me? Nothing. And that is a very easy Rival 3 battle, especially when you consider how difficult Rival 2 was. But now, we normally go to Lieutenant Surge, but of course we haven't actually defeated Misty yet, so we don't have the ability to use Cut outside of battle. And Lieutenant Surge being the electric gym, maybe that's not the best idea. Misty, however, is a complete joke. Her Pokemon's most dangerous attacks are water attacks, which won't do much to me, but anyway, I knock out the Star U in one hit, so I don't have to worry about any kind of attack. As for Star Me, its tackle is doing next to nothing. Meanwhile, Body Slam looks to be a 3 at KO. I end up getting a critical hit. And that is two gym leaders down. And more importantly, we get access to Bubble Beam, which is a pretty big improvement over Water Gun. Upon defeating Misty, I'm not going to do Lieutenant Surge quite yet. I'm going to go through Rock Tunnel first and make my way to Celadon. Honestly, I could have gotten the HM for Fly and done shopping early, but you do get a bunch of money from the Game Corner, so we're going to do that first. And Giovanni, who is the only difficult trainer typically. I mean, we have Bubble Beam. Kangaskhan maybe could have been a little problematic if Giovanni got really lucky, but he didn't. And so with that extra money, we can go shopping, buy some calcium, and we can get a fresh water, which will allow us to get the TM for Ice Beam. Now, Ice Beam on a Lapras and Ice Pokemon is extremely useful, and it's a base 95 attack. So that's going to be one of our main attacking moves going forward. We also can go to Saffron City and pick up the TM for Psychic, which Lapras can also learn. With those in hand, we can head down to Vermilion. We can't fly there because you need to beat Lieutenant Surge in order to use Fly, and beat Lieutenant Surge we shall. Since we waited, we have Ice Beam and can one-shot Voltorb, and we outsped, which is pretty good. We are also able to one-shot Pikachu. Raichu does outspeed and go for Thunderbolt, and it does about a third of my HP. However, I am able to one-shot with Ice Beam, but maybe that's just because I got a critical hit. Who cares? That is three gym leaders down. And I know what you all are saying who've watched the channel. j -Rose, don't forget Erica. Don't worry. This time around, I didn't forget Erica, but I am going to leave her for now since... We are a water Pokemon, and I'm a little concerned about being outsped and Razor Leaf. So for now, we're going to head to Lavender Town and do the Pokemon Tower, which means we get to battle Rival 4. Another thing longtime watchers of the series will know is that Rival 4 is way easier than pretty much every other rival relative to where he is in the game. This is no exception. We are actually going to one-shot every single one of the rival's Pokemon. And Lapras' very deep move pool is coming into play. Other than Kadabra, we have a super effective move for every single one of the rival's Pokemon, and thus we're able to get 5 hits, 5 knockouts, and at least at this point we're out speeding, although I don't anticipate that's going to continue. Rival 5 will get quite a big level jump. But I'm not going to battle Rival 5 right away. Obviously, I need to finish up the Pokemon Tower, and once we do that, we're going to head to Fuchsia City. I know, Erica, I will battle her, but I still wasn't convinced it was the right time. Since I do have the TM for Psychic, I thought perhaps Koga would be pretty easy. 
Now, the first question is whether we outspeed, which we do, and we one-shot. That was the second question, but that's just the coughing. We still have Muck and Weezing, which probably are going to be a little bit more difficult. Well, we are still outspeeding Muck. That's pretty good. However, we don't one-shot. I'm not surprised about that. It does very decent damage with Sludge, but we did more than half the first time around, so we're going to be able to knock it out. And since we were able to knock out the first coughing in one hit, we will likewise be able to knock out the second coughing in one hit. And now it's just a matter of wheezing. Wheezing, unfortunately, does outspeed me. Koga goes for an X attack, and Psychic is doing about half, which is really, really good. Unfortunately, we get self-destruct, and we need to try again. Now, based on what just happened, it would appear to me, and this battle confirms it, that the only real threat is the wheezing. We can take out the first three Pokemon fairly easily and fairly consistently. The question is, are we going to get self-destruct, and will we survive if Koga just uses it right away? That question won't be answered. Weezing goes for Sludge, does decent damage, and poisons me. Psychic doesn't look to be doing as much as last time, which isn't great. Now, we need... Great. No self-destruct. We should... Uh, I was worried about that. Didn't get a good range on the first one. We're going to need some luck, and Smog is good luck. We have defeated Koga. Wasn't too bad. Second try victory. Could have used rare candies maybe to outspeed, but didn't need them. Second try, I think, is more than consistent enough for our purposes. And that is four gym badges in the books. And you know what? Let's make it five and go battle Erica because I have a pretty good feeling we'll outspeed and one-shot all her Pokemon. And in fact, spoiler, that's exactly what ends up happening. This is exactly what I want. I didn't want Razor Leaf. I didn't want Petal Dance. I just wanted one Ice Beam, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, two Ice Beams, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, and three. Three Ice Beams, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I know that quote-unquote bit, if you can even call it that, was completely run into the ground. So if this gets, I don't know, 50,000 likes, we'll do another count impression. But continuing on with our Lapras run, here is where I made a bit of a mistake. I decided to go battle Blaine, rather than going to Sylph Company, and this didn't work for a couple of reasons. Number one, I'm at such a low level that the max repels actually don't repel everything in the Pokemon Mansion. But the bigger concern ended up being Blaine himself for reasons I didn't anticipate. You see, Blaine's Ponyta as well as his Rapidash no Fire Spin. And as it would turn out, I don't outspeed either of them. Now, Fire Spin is only 70% accurate, but the way it works is once it hits, I can no longer attack. If it were 100% accurate, it would literally be an instant win if I went second. That is how cheap it is. So the only thing I can hope for is that it misses. Because Blaine has good AI, he should always be using Fire Spin in theory. And even if he goes for a potion, it doesn't break the Fire Spin. By far one of the cheapest things about Generation 1, it's been changed as of Generation 2. So, how did I end up defeating Blaine? Simple. I just got the Fire Spin to miss. I was actually going to use the Rare Candies here, had I not won this second time around. And truth be told, I get absurdly lucky that our Canine misses not only with one Fire Blast, but two Fire Blasts. So, yeah, that was pretty ridiculous. Honestly, I should have just gone and done Rival Fievel first, and maybe even Sabrina, and done Blaine later. That was a mistake of mine, and thankfully it doesn't cost me here. I know typically I don't love luck-based strategies, but considering it's already cost me a little bit of time to do Blaine first, and I realistically was being just over-clever and should have done Rival Fievel, I'm going to let this battle stand and just eat the slight time loss. I don't know if using the rare candies here would be the most efficient use of them. So we're going to hold off for now and we're going to go and actually battle Rival Fievel. We've been talking about him a lot. Let's actually do the battle. And I forgot to save. So hopefully this battle goes well. And Pidgeot goes for Sand Attack. Hooray. And I miss. Double hooray. Can't wait to have to battle Blaine again. Since, you know, that's the last time I saved. Alright, quick attack doesn't do much, and I hit and knock out with Ice Beam. One down. Okay, outspeed and hit the Gyarados with Thunderbolt. That is two down. 
Unfortunately, here's a case of me looking at the second screen and not actually paying attention. I use Psychic and Growlithe gets off an Ember. Not too big a deal, but you know, meant to go for Surf there. Three down anyway. Now here's the Pokemon I'm most worried about. Alakazam it outspeeds and goes for Recover, and we freeze it. Okay, I think we win. I think we're good. There's a chance Venusaur could knock me out. I'm pretty bulky and we should one-shot, but I'm not sure. All right, and we miss. And Leech Seed, beautiful. Just perfect. Come on, please hit. Yes, yes. All right, man, that was really stressful for an easy battle. This is why I can't forget to save. And this is also why I shouldn't get ahead of myself. One of the biggest reasons I don't stream these attempts is already I can get distracted by various things and make small errors. Usually it doesn't cost me because I'll just reset, but this time the error was not saving. The long and the short is I need to be focused on these runs, and if I were to stream, I would not be. And that is antithetical to my going fast, which is what we're trying to do here. Speaking of which, Giovanni is going to go very, very fast. Not much to say, because other than the Kangaskhan, we have a super effective move for all of his Pokemon, and this is going to be pretty good foreshadowing to the gym battle. But before we can beat Giovanni in the gym, we need to beat Sabrina. And this is a battle I'm pretty scared. We have not outsped any Psychic Pokemon to this point. We don't have any super effective moves, and we're a special attacker. None of these things bode well for beating her, but there's only one way to find out. So first we have Kadabra. It outspeeds and goes for Psychic. No special drop. There is a 30% chance we lose special, which is both bad for offense and defense and would necessitate a reset. Ice Beam's doing about two-thirds, so it's going to be a two a KO. Another Psychic, no special drop, and we knock out Kadabra. Mr. Mime doesn't have Psychic, it only has Confusion. Ice Beam's doing just about as much to Mr. Mime. It goes for Confusion, that's only a 25% chance. We're able to knock it out. Venomoth's not even a Psychic Pokemon, but we have Psychic ourselves, which should be super effective. Does not knock it out. Of course, it goes for Stun Spore. The worst possible move. Now it goes first, hits me with Psybeam, and I'm at 62 HP for an Alakazam that's going to outspeed me. I'm paralyzed. All right, this didn't go very well. Okay, Reflect is good, and that's not even doing half. Great. Alakazam goes for Reflect again, and I'm paralyzed. Shocker. But, thankfully, Alakazam goes for Psy Wave that does almost nothing, and we actually have an opportunity here. The moment of truth, reflect, we win. Wow, first try victory. I'm stunned. This one, I was not expecting first try, especially after I got paralyzed, but I'm not going to complain. We're going to be moving on to the final gym, Giovanni, our third battle with him. Now, the first Pokemon's going to be Rhyhorn. It's going to be easily outsped in one shot. Dugtrio is going to be the only po- Oh, come on. Really? That is like the only move I didn't want to see because I'm going to outspeed and one-shot everything. And yeah, of course, we're going to miss now. This isn't really a concern. I can't actually see me losing as we knock out Nidoqueen, but it might... No, we do hit Nidoking and... Okay, potentially could have been really frustrating. We did get two straight misses on Nidoqueen, but that is it for the gym leaders. Eight up, eight down, not too many retries. Lapras has done very, very well so far. But as you all know, the real challenge is after we defeat Giovanni, Rival 6, Elite 4, and Champion tend to be at this point over half of my video length. They're really, really tough. And I'm pretty sure Rival 6 is not going to discontinue this trend. I'm not too worried about Pidgeot. It goes for Wing Attack and that does next to nothing. Lapras has very good defense and good enough special to knock it out with Ice Beam. Rhyhorn is next. I'm just going to go for either Surfer Ice Beam should do the trick. And that is two down. Third is Gyarados. I'm going to go for a Thunderbolt. That is going to knock it out. And that is three down. Growlithe is also not something I'm overly concerned with. Just go for Surf or Critical Hit Thunderbolt. Once again, I was thinking ahead because we have Alakazam and it's going to outspeed. But like with Sabrina, it went for Reflect, but I'm doing even less damage with Ice Beam. It goes for Psychic, no special defense drop, and it's looking to be a three-hit KO, which is pretty good, actually. 
But there we go. The special drop that I was worried about. We don't knock out Alkazam. And honestly, this is as good a time as any to use my rare candies. It will make Alkazam so much easier. Why not? Are we going to use it either just now or before the Elite Four? It's late enough in the run. There's almost no trainers left. And with nine rare candies which we've accumulated, we go from being pretty below Pidgeot's level to above. We didn't outspeed because of Quick Attack, but we still knock it out. Unsurprisingly, we're still going to knock out the Rhyhorn. We're obviously going to still outspeed and knock out the Gyarados. And we're going to outspeed and knock out the Growlithe, but the real concern was always going to be Alakazam. Unsurprisingly, it's still outspeeding. Psychic's doing a lot of damage, but no drop. Ice Beam's doing about half. That is a big improvement because... Yes, no drop. That's only going to be two Psychics it gets to use as opposed to three. And now we just have to one-shot Venusaur and we're done. We are a nice Pokemon using a nice move and we do one-shot Venusaur. So, second try victory, first try with rare candies. That really wasn't so bad, but I'm a little scared about that Alakazam when it comes to the championship battle. But before we can even think about the champion battle, we have four other really tough trainers to get through. And I don't have anything more to say. Let's go take on the Elite Four. So Loralee leads with Dugong, but we have Thunderbolt, we outspeed, and thankfully it goes for Growl, which fails, doesn't even matter, and we knock it out in two hits. Cloyster's special isn't amazing, so I'm hoping this will... Oh, it doesn't one-shot. That's too bad. It wouldn't have been able to do much to us anyway, but it was paralyzed, didn't attack, so we can quickly knock it out. Slowbro doesn't have a whole lot to do either. And like with the other two, we're not going to one-shot with Thunderbolt, but we're still at full HP headed to Jinx. Now, Jinx I'm a little nervous about because it has pretty good special. It goes for Body Slam, gets a crit, still doesn't do very much damage, and Surf's doing about half. That's about as good as I could hope for, to be quite honest. But as I say that, Body Slam paralyzes me, and I can't move because of the paralysis. Lovely. Another useless Body Slam, this time Surf hits and crits. Don't know if the crit mattered, but that is four Pokemon down, Lapras doesn't have Thunderbolt on Loralee's side, so this should be okay. Of course, it does have Confuse Ray, so now we have Parafusion going on here. And I do hit myself in Confusion, so starting to get a little worried. Lapras wants to Confuse me again, which isn't a thing, but don't worry, I hit myself in Confusion. So, getting a little more scared. Now, Loralee's Lapras goes for Body Slam, it does way more than Jinx. And that was good damage, but I could get knocked out here. Thankfully, it goes for Confuse Ray, and we don't quite knock it out with two Thunderbolts, meaning Loralee has one more opportunity to defeat me. Fortunately, she inexplicably decides to use a Super Potion. I don't get Parahaxed, and that is Loralee down. In the past few videos, she's been pretty easy, so good to see her make a bit of a comeback. Someone who is not going to make much of a comeback is Bruno. Bruno is going to be as easy as ever seeing as we have Surf and Psychic, and we're going to use Surf on the Onyx, and, and there goes the Onyx. Then we're going to use Psychic on both the Hitmonchan and the Hitmonlee. Onyx number two is going to do about as much as Onyx number one. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to one-shot Machamp. Submission could be a problem. Of course, I get a critical hit. Not sure if that mattered. However, once again... Bruno is just about as much of a joke as usual, and we move on to the Agatha Lottery. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yes, we do have Psychic, which is super effective, but these Pokemon have super high special, and I'm not very fast. So we're still going to have the problem that they're going to outspeed me and get multiple opportunities to confuse me, put me to sleep, etc. This could be really bad. Speaking of which, Gengar number one confuses me, and I hit myself in confusion. This is how I expect this to go. But in case you thought it wasn't so bad, it hits me with hypnosis and I'm now asleep and confused. And yeah, this is probably over. It goes for Nightshade, which arguably could have done more than Dream Eater. And I wake up, so that's kind of nice. But yeah, like I said, not looking good. Thankfully, doubling up on Confuse Ray seems to be a bit of a theme. I don't hit myself in confusion and I'm doing about half damage. A little bit more, actually, which will guarantee the 2 KO, assuming I hit. Well, Gengar goes for another Confuse Ray. I snap out of Confusion, and I knock out Gengar number one. All things considered, that went really well. 
Unfortunately, the going well is about to end. First off, I misclick. I meant to hit Ice Beam, but don't worry. I get hit by Confuse Ray and hit myself in Confusion. So no harm, no foul. As it would turn out, we actually have the exact same speed as Golbat, and we lost the speed tie. This time we don't. We don't hit ourselves in Confusion and knock it out. So that's two down. The Hunter at speeds and goes for Hypnosis. Perfect. Second time I'm asleep. There's no way we're winning this. Just like the Gengar before it, it goes for Nightshade, and just like the time before, I wake up. Great, but we only have 76 HP. It goes for Confuse Ray. I'm still confused from the Golbat, and I'm able to hit. Would've liked the one-hit KO, but we come fairly close, which is good. Haunter now goes for Dream Eater. Good time to mention it just attacks randomly. And we are able to knock it out, so that's only two Pokemon left. Now, we do outspeed Arbok, and we should... Oh my, so close to one-shotting. And, oh, that's brutal. So Acid didn't do much damage, but now a single Nightshade from the Gengar is going to take me out. So we cannot get Nightshade. Ugh. All right, well, here is the level 60 Gengar. It goes for Confuse Ray, and I went for Ice Beam just hoping I got a Freeze or something, and it's doing pretty good damage. I probably should have gone for Psychic. Didn't think Psychic would be a 2 KO, which I think it might have been. Anyway, it doesn't matter because it goes for Nightshade, and round number one versus the Elite Four ends with some pretty brutal luck versus Agatha. Now, I had seen enough, so I decide it's time to go shopping. And I buy, in the end, three Calcium and two Carbos. Try to break that speed tie with the Golbat, try to do a little bit more damage, and maybe one-shot that Arbok and maybe even Haunter. I also do have one more rare candy I acquired in Victory Road, which I could potentially use. So let's see if round two goes better. I'm not expecting any big changes versus Dugong. I mean, it goes for takedown, which doesn't really matter. But the big question is, will I one-shot Cloyster? I don't. Very, very close. If only we had a few more levels, we would easily one-shot, but it doesn't really matter, like I said. Just a bit of a time loss. And the rest of this battle should go pretty much the exact same, at least until Jinx. Hopefully, we don't get paralyzed this time. Thankfully, Jinx goes for Thrash. It's not going to do too much damage, and that won't paralyze me. So, we will easily be able to knock out the Jinx. Lee's Lapras seems to be taking lessons from Agatha, because after I deal about half damage with my Thunderbolt, it hits me with a Confuse Ray. Unsurprisingly, I hit myself with Confusion, but it goes for another Confuse Ray, which will obviously do nothing. And I don't hit myself with Confusion and knock it. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? All right, well, it goes for Confuse Ray again. I don't hit myself in Confusion. That was ridiculous. Wow, so we almost lost to Lee. Beautiful. And uh, hopefully that's the worst luck I get, because if that is the type of luck we're going to get for Agatha, I might as well just turn off the game right now. And you know what? Speaking of bad luck, in this Bruno battle, while obviously the first four Pokemon are completely not an issue we still don't one shot machamp and this time it does go for submission because i'm at full hp it deals a lot of damage but it doesn't knock me out it knocks itself out in fact due to recoil but if it got a critical hit bruno could theoretically defeat this lapras sure it's a 25 percent chance and then like a 15 percent chance on top of that still there is like a two percent reality out there that Bruno defeats my Lapras. That is a scary thought. And speaking of scary, who we got the ghost trainer, Agatha. She's the worst. And yeah, let's just go battle her again. Hooray. Well, we get hit with hypnosis and we wake up immediately. Okay, sure. Realistically, Nightshade's not even good, but I'll take it at this point. And Psychic is doing over half. That's actually really, really good. Unfortunately, Confuse Ray and hitting myself in Confusion is very, very bad. Once again, doubling up on the Confuse Rays I see, but I hit myself in Confusion again, so we're almost at half health. Hooray! And did I say half health? I meant 75 HP after another Nightshade. We are able to knock out Gengar number one, but with an abysmal amount of HP, pretty much that's probably going to be run number two. And it's definitely going to be when, yep, yep, why? Why can't I just take the extra second and press up on the D-pad? And of course, of course Supersonic hits and I'm confused. Unsurprisingly, I hit myself in confusion, but Agatha uses the good old retroactive super potion. And, oh, would you look at that? We knock it out. We can't withstand a nightshade because 
In this case, it was totally my fault again. This is the second straight battle versus Agatha. I just clicked A too fast. What's going on with me? All right, let's try and keep it together. We're going to go for Psychic. It's going to lower Special, which doesn't matter. Retroactive Super Potion is perfect. Three down. Here we see if our shopping was worth it. We're going to go for Psychic. We're going to one-shot Arbok. Still doesn't matter because one Nightshade will knock out Lapras. But hey, it's the little things. Anyway, Gengar is going to use the Twitter attack. I mean, Toxic. And I'm going to go for Psychic. It's going to be a 2 KO. We just don't want to see Nightshade. And I'm sorry, Gengar. I must be dreaming in real life, but not in game. Because that Dream Eater was the perfect move for me to knock it out. And we have made it past the Agatha Lottery for the first time today. I don't know why I'm so pumped. It's only my second attempt. And this has actually been a really, really solid run. Not a lot of frustration. And I think that's why I'm so pumped. Despite a bit of a rocky beginning, Lapras is doing really, really well. And I'd love to close it out. But of course, we still have Lance and the champion. Both of them are really difficult. And let's just go battle Lance. If we outspeed Gyarados, I think we're good. Okay, so this is the one I was most scared about, and we outsped and knocked it out. So this should be pretty easy. We outspeed Dragonair and knock it out with Ice Beam. Obviously, the other Dragonair is identical, so the same thing happens. Now, Aerodactyl does outspeed me. It could go for Supersonic, it goes for Bite. Perfect, I don't flinch. And now we don't want, like, a critical hit Hyper Beam. I don't even know if Dragonite will outspeed. It doesn't. We win. That was really, really easy. Okay, so Lance was a pushover. That's nice. Wow, what kind of world is Lance worse than Loralee? Craziness. Anyway, we are at the champion. We've battled him a bunch of times. We know what it's going to be like. And I don't have anything more to teach. I just have to heal up. And let's hope for the best. Okay, Pidgeot goes for Whirlwind. This battle's off to a really good start. Yes! We knock it out with a single Ice Beam. Great, great start. One down. But here comes arguably the scariest Pokemon, Alakazam. It goes for Psychic. Okay, pretty good. And Ice Beam. Okay, that's really good, but it was a critical hit. So it's going to be a three-hit KO otherwise. And honestly, this feels like the moment of truth. Psychic is used. No special drop. I'd rather go for something else. We knock out Alakazam. And is this it? Did we just win? We're going to outspeed Rhydon. Sturdy is not a thing. Easy one-hit KO. Three down. We outspeed yet another Gyarados. Thunderbolt is double super effective. That is four down. Arcanon, kind of unfortunately really, doesn't know Fire Blast because it just has level up moves, meaning it's stuck with Ember. Although based on the amount of damage Ember did, Fire Blast would not have knocked me out. But I do knock out the Arcanine, and it all comes down to this. Will I one-shot the Venusaur with Ice Beam? Will it secure our victory? Come on! No. No. Oh, that sucked. And there was an easy way around it, too. In the Pokemon Mansion, I always pick up Blizzard. The only reason I don't use it is that it has 90%, not 70%. 90% which is really good, but that 10% mischance I don't like. Still, it easily would have one-shot Venusaur and Pidgeot, so I guess just redo this and use Blizzard, and we should be fine. And so that's what I'm going to go about doing. And you want to know what the sad truth of the matter is? Venusaur also has Solar Beam, and Mega Drain for that matter, which I don't know if it would have knocked me out. So there essentially was a 1 in 3 chance of the rival winning at that point. And wouldn't you know, that's exactly what happened. And so, although it's not too, too bad, especially Loralee and Bruno, we will still have to go through the Agatha lottery again. And that can go pretty poorly. This time around, Gengar goes for Nightshade immediately. I go for Psychic. It misses with Hypnosis, and I hit with Psychic. One down. This time, I... Do click up on the D-pad, go for Ice Beam, and that is Golbat down. Unfortunately, I forgot to use the Rare Candy, so the Haunter now outspeeds me. Goes for Dream Eater, so that's fine. We don't knock it out in one hit. And of course, it goes for Confuse Ray. I don't hit myself in Confusion, which is nice, but we're stuck against this Arbok, which can paralyze us, and the Gengar being confused, that's not great. 
Well, we donate ourselves in confusion, so it all comes down to the final Gengar. Of course, I don't have enough power points with Psychic, so it's not going to be a 2-hit KO, which sucks. At the very least, it goes for Dream Eater, that's good. I snap out of confusion, that's good. And I benefit from the 30% special drop I've been so worried about. So, yeah, we're going to be able to knock it out with Ice Beam, and we have made it, probably, to the champion once again. I can't see how we won't, to be completely honest with you. Considering the only Pokemon that outspeeds me is Aerodactyl, and the worst thing it could possibly do is hit me with Supersonic or a Critical Hit Hyper Beam. And even with a Critical Hit Hyper Beam, I don't think it would one-shot Lapras. And so as I quickly make my way through the Lance battle, knocking out his first three Pokemon, there is Supersonic, but it fails 50-50 chance of that occurring. And we have made it right back to the champion, Always feels really good when you lose, and in the very next attempt, you make it right back there. We can teach Blizzard. Of course, there is some concern, because we only have 5 power points of Blizzard, and there's a 10% chance it misses. But, it will work, assuming we can get past Alakazam. I think we have this. But, if nothing else I've learned, a lot of these runs are easier said than done, and so the only way we're actually going to find out is to start the battle. Once again, Pidgeot goes for Whirlwind, I go for Blizzard, and that's Pidgeot down. Very, very good. Alakazam goes for Recover, that's really good, and Blizzard hits, and wow, that's half damage. We could actually knock this out in two hits. That would be amazing. Unfortunately, it goes for Recover, which doesn't damage me, but it means we're not going to be able to knock this out in two hits. And I've got to be cognizant of my Blizzard power points or not. Wow, okay. All right, that's really good. It goes for Psybeam. Critical hit, I don't care. It doesn't confuse me. Knock it out. All right. All right, I think we might have just won, but let's see. Well, I hope you like the surf animation. I actually think it looks pretty cool, but it wastes time. It is the best move to use against Rhydon, and now it's gone. Three down. Obviously, we still outspeed the Gyarados. We're going to go for Thunderbolt. We're going to knock it out. Four down. Just like last time, our Canine's going to go for Ember. We're going to go for Surf. And it all comes down to this. Will we hit Venusaur? And does Blizzard do enough to knock it out? All right, we hit. <laughs> and we crit. Doesn't matter. Knockout is a knockout. I'd like to know if that was a guaranteed knockout or not. I don't really care. We have done it, and this felt like a really, really fast run, even with the slow level up, even with starting with Water Gun, not doing Lieutenant Surge right away, which cost time, and it was a sub four hour run. Haven't had one of those in a really long time. That's going to put it in the third tier alongside Dragonite, Hitmonlee, etc. This was really fun to do. And it gives me optimism that something like a Starmie may be even better than I think, despite the fact it's also in the slow level up group. With its psychic typing and its superior speed, perhaps Starmie will make a run for one of the best Pokemon that isn't a legendary. We'll have to see. I don't know when that video is going to come out. We have plenty more videos on the way. Thank you all for watching, and until next time, take care.